Back in 2014, Yamaha had a wonky idea. They said, what if we put a huge three-cylinder engine in a motorcycle that didn't weigh a whole lot, had a short wheelbase, and was dirt cheap to buy? That spawned the FZ09 that everyone knows and loves as the original wheelie machine. However, in the last couple of years, as you guys know, the naked market has changed quite a bit. You've got bikes like the Street Triple 765, the Z900, the KTM Duke 890. They've all got electronics, bigger engines, more refined characteristics than the original FZ09 MT09 platform motorcycles. Now, this bike's getting a massive update for 2021, and we we're definitely going to take a ride and review it. But we want to find out today if this original MT09 platform is still worth your consideration in 2021. All right guys, you've probably seen this MT09 in a lot of our videos lately, and that's because it's one of our giveaway motorcycles. It's part of our intermediate bike sweepstakes. We do expert bikes and beginner bikes, and this one sits right in between for those of you looking for your second or third motorcycle. It makes a great version for one of those. However, we have a new intermediate bike we're giving away. Spite roller in here. Ah, Boom. the beautiful Aprilia RS660. It is replacing this MT09. So this bike sweepstakes is going to wrap up this weekend. This one's starting up on the 29th of March. Make sure you get your entries for this bike or for this one over here. You're not going to want to miss it. It's very yellow, guys. It's, it's very yellow. It's not that yellow. It's more of like an acid green. <laughs> It's very yellow. <laughs> Looking good, we all set up here. All right, I'm just seeing enough of the bike. Oh, Spud, I just remembered something. Mm. I gotta talk about something real quick. Oh, Hold boy. on a sec. All right. All right, guys. You already know that when it comes to Yam and Spite's tail tidy and exhaust shop over here, we have many of the right tools for that job. We got mechanics pick, vice grips over here, but the one tool we don't talk enough about is Manscaped. When it comes to trimming your nuts, your pubes, and everything else in between, you want to make sure to use the right tool for the job. If you go at it with a hacksaw, you're going to get yourself hurt. So check out Manscaped. They've got all the tools for you to get trimmed up, beautifully ready to go for spring. The riding season is upon us. You want to make sure you're looking fresh on your motorcycle. You don't want to jump back on it with some horrible gooch juice or something like that. Hit the link down below. 20% off is automatically added to your order. Get yourself the lawnmower 3.0, the ball deodorants, everything else in between. Manscaped's got you covered. They've been a long time supporter of our channel, so hit the link down below and check them out. So some specs on this machine, if you don't already know or have been living under a rock, it's making 115 horsepower and 65 foot-pounds of torque out of its 847cc triple. It also weighs in at 425 pounds wet and ready to ride. But what you might not notice from this bike looking at the spec sheet is that it sits kind of funny. It feels like a supermoto with a high seat, wide tank, and high handlebars. But combined with this engine and its low weight, it pulls like a leader bike. It should not feel as fast as it does, and yet when you get on the throttle, it feels like you're going to hyperspace. It's great, but... This bike handles really funny, and I can't figure it out, so I brought in our resident fast boy to explain it to me like I'm a five-year-old. <laughs> All right, guys, so the MT09 does handle kind of strangely. Compared to the other naked bikes in the category, it doesn't hug a corner like you would expect. Now, my thinking around this, and a lot of people have done a lot of thinking around why this bike doesn't handle very well, is that number one, the front suspension setup just isn't that great. It's not a super high quality piece. Number two, the geometry setup on this bike is kind of bizarre. Maybe it's the rake or maybe the overall frame or something like that. You get a lot of driveline lash from this machine as well. Um, so the on-off throttle feel is a little bizarre. And when you're mid-corner and picking it up out of a corner, you want nice linear progressive throttle. So all those things pull together, make the MT09 not the most fantastic bike in the middle of a corner, but when you exit the corner, you get to lift the front wheel and it's party time. But can you fix it? Can you fix this motorcycle with what's out there? So everyone on the internet tells me that you can indeed fix it. They say if you put on an Olin's front end, a new rear shock, adjust some things, change the rear sets, put clip-ons on it, as I've seen some guys do, you can apparently fix the bike. However, many trusted sources online have tried to fix this motorcycle and have never really gotten it to do what it needs to do. However, I have heard that the 2021 MT09 has fixed a lot of these problems, and so we're dying to swing a leg over that bike and see how it handles. 
Alrighty guys, one of the things about the MT-09 that I don't quite understand is why it feels so cheap. Spite, do you have any idea why this bike feels so cheap to ride? Probably because when they first released this motorcycle back in 2014, it costs like $7,800. It yeah. was dirt cheap and that's why people loved it. And they really haven't updated it all that much. And as a result, you get, you know, kind of wonky plastics. You got sort of cheap clusters and so forth. And this black eye of a dash, which really kind of sucks. Yeah. It's a bit of a bummer. Uh, one thing that is nice is this tank is actually metal. A lot of times you, you get a cheap kind of plasticky motorcycle and you don't get a metal tank and it actually is metal. So it's, it's nice to see on a bike like this. Mm -hmm. And you know, while the fit and finish isn't all that great, you still get a lot out of this motorcycle if yeah. you can look past some dangly wires and you know maybe maybe a little bit of loose tolerance here and there. Yeah, when you ride this bike, it kind of feels like it's about to come apart, sort of. But it's kind of the fun factor of it too. Uh, but the competition is a little bit different, if I remember correctly. Oh, absolutely. The competition really brings it. So why don't we check out what is out in the field nowadays? The first and perhaps most obvious competitor to the MT-09 is the Street Triple. It's always right next to the MT-09 in thumbnails with the title Best Middleweight Bikes Question Mark Exclamation Point. The best way to explain the relationship between the MT-09 and the Street Triple is the MT-09 is basically a high school jock. It's jacked, always wearing its letterman jacket, and is passing with straight D's. The Street Triple is like the rich kid with a brand new car, clean shaven, wearing a polo with a popped collar, and with straight A's. Triumph has recently dropped the S model, but you can still find some here and there. It's a little slower than the MT-09, but with a better frame and Triumph's characteristically great throttle feel. But the Street Triple R, the new base model, is putting down 116 horsepower and 57 foot-pounds of torque. Weighing in a little over 410 pounds, it's featuring the old dash from the Daytona, which means a big sweeping tack and an LCD dash, which is just perfect. It's also packing switchable rider modes, optional quick shifter, and a bunch of other goodies, and it starts at $10,800. But you've got your RS, which has the TFT dash, quick shifter is standard, programmable modes, adjustable suspension, but it does come in at a $12,850 premium. Both the Street Triple R and the RS are better motorcycles than the MT-09, but they're much more serious machines. The MT-09 is accessible to more people than the Street Triple is, and while Triumphs are way more reliable than they used to be, you could drop the MT-09 down a cliff and it'll still run. A relatively new competitor to the MT-09 is KTM's Duke 890. And yeah, I had to talk about KTM for a minute, but seriously, the 890 is one of the best intermediate naked bikes out there. 121 horsepower, 73 foot-pounds of torque, and 406 pounds wet weight with a cross-plane parallel twin, which means it sounds like a V-twin. Because KTM is trying to out Kyle Kawasaki, they're slapping everything they can possibly put onto a motorcycle into the bike. You've got your TFT dash, fully adjustable WP suspension, three rider modes, quick shifter up and down, traction control, Brembo Stylema calipers, a hand job machine, LED lights, steering stabilizer, optional race package, and much more. They've managed to get the price down to $11,699, which is a ton of bang for the buck. There's basically no other naked bike at this price point with its features and handling. Like the Street Triple though, people have some serious reservations about KTM's reliability, and I can say from personal experience that they are way more maintenance heavy than the MT-09. But you give a little, get a little. But perhaps you're sick of hearing about how awesome Euro bikes are. You want a motorcycle that'll actually run for longer than a few years and it won't cost you an arm and a leg to maintain. Well, lucky for you, Kawasaki has the Z900. It's unique in the market thanks to its inline four. And I know you Suzuki boys are saying, um, actually the Jixxus 750 is an inline four, but no one cares. The Z900 is putting down 125 horsepower and 73 foot-pounds of torque out of its 948cc engine. It's a bit heavy at 460 pounds with ABS, and while it does have a TFT dash, power modes including programmable rider mode, as well as adjustable suspension, it does not have a quick shifter. Will you die from shame without having one on your bike? No, but considering that the rest of the bikes in the field have one, it's a bit of a bummer. The Z900's saving grace is that it's really cheap at $8,999. You'll just have to decide for yourself if some of the missing features are a deal killer. 
Now I know what you're saying to yourself, these new competitors are so much more fancy and crazy than this bike, but there's a 2021 MT-09 Yam, talk about that. So I will. So that new bike has an 890cc three cylinder engine, makes 117 horsepower and has 69 foot pounds of torque. Nice. It weighs in at 417 pounds, but the big difference for the 2021 is the completely revised frame, suspension, electronics package. It's got a TFT, up and down quick shifter, a six axis IMU derived from the R1. So it's a much more pulled together and modern motorcycle. So some of you guys out there might think that a motorcycle with all that electronics and all that good stuff might take away from some of the flavor and fun of this motorcycle. Now, the only way I'm gonna know that is by testing the new 2021 MT-09. We're definitely gonna do that. However, there's also an SP version that features Olin suspension as well. So the MT-09 has grown up a lot over the years and has increased its price. But we still think that this original MT-09 is still one of the best bang for bucks you can get on two wheels. All right, Spite, so we said the MT-09 is one of the best bang for bucks on the market right now, especially some of these used models. So who do you think should own this thing? I think this bike is really for somebody who wants just a Saturday, Sunday, really fun motorcycle. Somebody who wants, maybe they've got a nicer bike that they ride to the office or something like that. This is their second motorcycle. It's, it's kind of the mistress, as it were. Right. Something that's really fun, really torquey, really stupid, and also very cheap. Yeah. You know, something that they don't have to worry about maintaining all that much. This bike is super, super simple to maintain. It's, it's a very cheap motorcycle all around. And again, it's dirt cheap to get your hands on. This one was mm -hmm. what, 7,500? Seven grand just about, yeah. And you can get these for down to 5,500, even cheaper. And if I'm not mistaken, you used to own one, didn't you? I did, yeah. So I actually had a 2014 FZ09 back in 2016, I think it was. And I think that tells you all you need to know about who should buy this type of bike. I was definitely a bit of a squid. I like doing wheelies. I like riding it aggressively. Um, it's a bike that elicits that kind of fun factor. It makes you want to ride it in this kind of stupid, goofy way and just enjoy it and have some fun with it. So I like your idea of it being kind of like a mistress bike, you know? I have seen folks who daily MT-09s and ride them to the office and back and stuff, <laughs> but there are better bikes for that task. Um, a Versus 650, why not? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anyone's cross shopping those two bikes, but this bike is a lot of fun. And as we said, if you've got five or six grand lying around, you could do a whole lot worse than picking up a used MT-09. However, given its handling characteristics and some of the wonkiness about it, it is definitely reserved as a street silly motorcycle. So if you're looking for a naked, you can take on track and still enjoy, there are other options we'd recommend as well. So Spite, what do you say we wrap this up today? We've had this bike in the shop for a little bit. What, what do you think about it? I think it's a very decent motorcycle, personally. I mm. think it does a lot of things well, and it does a lot of things poorly. Uh, it's, it's a motorcycle that if you get on and just want to have fun and go hit a twisty road at, you know, just a chill pace, this is perfect. If you want to, you know, crack the throttle open and feel that front wheel lift on you, it's perfect. But if you want something a little bit more refined, something that doesn't have that crazy driveline lash, something that's pulled together, it's not really it. it. I like your analogy of it being a big plate of food versus a nice, you know, uh, put together meal. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it'll fill you up, but you might not be totally satisfied, I think. Yeah, that's how I would put it as well. It's a motorcycle that, um, you know, makes a big splash of a first impression. Yes. If you've never ridden one of these bikes before and you jump on this thing, it really makes a very strong first impression. It's like meeting an incredibly extroverted person for the first time. But as you ride it, you kind of get used to it and you realize that, as Spite mentioned, it's a lot of food, but not a very expertly crafted meal that you could enjoy. Um, so I would rate this bike like a six and a half or seven out of 10, personally. I think that's right where it's at. Seven out of 10, good enough. I yeah. would say. It's a, it's a riot of a to good time, but there's better bikes out there. Yeah, so as we mentioned, we are looking forward to testing the 2021 MT-09. I've had a lot of experience with this platform. I think it's gonna be really different, but make sure you get signed up to enter to win this motorcycle for free. Hit the link down below to yamenu.co. Thanks again to Manscaped for supporting today's video, and we'll catch you on the next one. See you later. Hey there, partner. You done made it to the end of this here Yammy New video, but I tell you what, there's another Yammy New video right over here waiting for you. Now, I know I'm real gracious like that, and I just do nice things for you, so why don't you take a look at this video, and you let me know what you think.